couple of years ago, I released this video showing and proving that if I changed the density of the medium, it would cause an acceleration. I got an egg and I got it to sit in a position of neutral buoyancy or equilibrium where F net equals zero. Any forces that were acting on the egg, they were not acting on the egg causing any acceleration. So there was no acceleration. There was no, there was therefore no forces or net force of zero. The purpose of the video was to demonstrate that the acceleration perceived by us on Earth is relatively caused by the medium. It is caused by the, the, the differential between the object in question and the medium it's in. That's why Newton's apple will fall up if the tree was growing in water. But as most things are in the medium of air, then it means that most things will displace air because it's a very slight medium. It was never done as a purposeful attack against anybody on the flat earth side. It was only ever done as a counter argument to gravity because I wanted to know well, what was causing things to accelerate if gravity is not a force. Fast forward 18 months or so, two years, and my biggest enemy seems to be Big Bob Nodell. I'm going to play a clip of Bob's words. Then I'm going to play a clip of Righteous Force. Then I'm going to show the uh, experiments where I test to see what's going on with the claim of this incoherent dielectric acceleration. What it actually is, is an acceleration. And what that acceleration is, is the thing that we say is this thing that causes a downward bias, right? What we're calling gravity here on Earth, in other words, when you drop a microphone to the ground, um, there's something that is that is causing it to go down. And it, I can tell you right now, guys, buoyancy and density alone do not explain the whole, you know, downward vector thing, right? There has to be a force there. And I'm going to prove that, right? And yeah, they play really, a huge role. Don't get, you know. Oh, they do. They play wrong. a huge yeah, role. Yeah, they're huge. The, the downward bias is a very weak, but it just sets a direction and a vector, you know, the vector, a direction and a magnitude. That's it. You know, a lot of people are trying to argue that relative dens density disequilibrium um, is the only force, which I can't even believe they call it a force. It's not a force, but it's the only thing at work that is causing things to separate and, and go up from down. That simply isn't true. And again, it's really, really quite easy to prove. <laughs> so if electrostatic charge, then displacement of egg. Yeah, man, science it. No, not displacement of egg. Oh, hold on, hold on. What do you mean, not displacement of egg? Do you know what the phenomena being studied is? Righteous. I'm more looking, myself personally, I'm more looking at how the phenomena of buoyancy and density works. No, no, no. that's not the phenomena of buoyancy and density. No, no. That, that, that's the IV, not the DV. The DV is some things go up, some things go down. Some things don't move right. at all. That's, right. that's the phenomena observed. Think Let me word it like this. Let me word it like this. So Riley's thing, okay, fine. We'll, we'll say it's a scientific experiment and everything, but now we're looking to control the other variables. Does that fit in more? Just kind of like uh, when we boil water by raising temperature, we control the pressure. So the pressure, the altitude is the controlled variable. So now we're looking at this Riley egg thing, yes, buoyancy and density, up and down, but we're now looking to see what variables are there that we can account for and control them better. And see if we keep, let's say, the buoyancy and density at one level, and then manipulate the electricity and see if that affects it, kind of like how you keep the temperature at a level with the egg. Sorry, I kind of mixed it yeah, up that's a bit. What I just but said. if you keep the temperature... That's what I just said and you objected. So I was like, All okay, right. <laughs> okay, if electricity, then egg displacement, Go ahead and go forth and science it, if you will. Fine. You know, if you can cause the egg to do something by inducing electricity into the water, then okay. Fine. Okay, here we go. We're ready. All right, so we might get fireworks. It's still bonfire night. I've got a voltmeter connected to the battery source, and as you can see, it currently reads 12 volts, just over 12 volts, 12.23 volts. Um, it's just a car battery, should really be 13 for 13 in a bit, but you know, it, it's just a car battery. 
Um, when I switch the switch, you're going to see that that voltage remains the same or it might kick down a little bit. Um, but there's the switch that we're going to be switching, which will be this little bugger here. And then we'll be testing to see whether or not this thing moves. I'll do it all in the same, see if we can do it all in the same shot. If we can pull that over here a little bit. No, I can't get it. The, the wire's not long enough. Alright, so. See if I can get a little bit more. There we go. Alright, so. This is the, the test for Bob Nodal's incoherent dielectric acceleration. And what we're going to try, I'm going to try and keep the phone as still as I can. Okay? So when I flick this, the light's going to come on. That shows that a current is created. And down from the bottom here, you're going to see, I think that's the positive. Is that the positive? Yeah, so the negative's at the top. So positive goes to the negative. The flow should be that the, the egg goes up, right? Because the flow is going positive to negative. That's the direction of the current. So in theory, the, well, it doesn't really matter. It can go any way. Does it cause acceleration in any way? It doesn't really matter whether it's up or down. Just does it cause it? That's what we're going to try and test. Ready? Drum roll, please. So right now there's 12 volts going through. That's way more than the, the millivolts that we have in the atmosphere in our level that Bob thinks claim causes a, a little kick. So if I just knock that off. So what we'll do is we'll do best of three. Okay, there's still nothing. And what I'll do this third time, I'll leave it running so that you can see that electrolysis starts. Um, not that I want to prove electrolysis, but it's just to show that there is actually a current passing through the water. Okay, so again, third time, 12 volts should be going through, to, is going through to the egg. And as we can see, there's no acceleration at all. It does not move. And now all I'm going to show you now is if you look to... If you look to the cathode at the top, there's a little bit of salt residue on the front here. If I get rid of this, there's electrolysis starting. Let's just try it one last time. Because it's supposed to give a kick. And now you'll see that there's no bubbles, the bubbles stop. No bubbles anymore. In fact, what we'll do here is if you just trust me and I'll just flip the switch. Can I do this? Alright, there we go. If I pull that down. So now I've got the cathode, the negative, and I've got the switch. So you'll literally see me flick it on. Is there any movement? Nothing, but you can see the bubbles are starting. You can see them bubbles. That but them bubbles prove that there is a current going through that water. They also prove that Bob's incoherent dielectric acceleration claim that gives relative density the little kick that it needs is debunked. There is no acceleration. There is no little kick. Sorry Bob, you're wrong. Can you please stop telling people that there's a little little bias that causes relative density because without that little bias, that little kick, relative density wouldn't work. Because it isn't true, is it? Last time. Watch for the bubbles, there's fuck all movement there. Can you see the bubbles coming off the cathode? So there's a current passing through Bob, there's no acceleration. Now, just to show that that is the way I claim it is. Let's get a little bit of table salt. Other brands are available, of course. 
And all I'm going to do now, shut up, sprinkle a little bit in to show that. There you go. So somebody explain why it comes to a stop as well if. It's all me that causing that. Bob can't do that. It's going down initially because it's landing on the egg initially, and I can't really get I can't really get it to go around the side because I'm not close enough. To it. If I do it down the side, shut up. There you go. So Bob's claim of incoherent dielectric acceleration is hereby debunked and Mickey you you tell him lad shut up you ready last time nothing C complete shit Bob there's his bubbles shut up nothing Bob you debunked me you debunked. Shut up. We'll take you out for a walk now. Okay. What it actually is, is an acceleration. And what that acceleration is, is the thing that we say is this thing that causes a downward bias, right? What we're calling gravity here on Earth. In other words, when you drop a microphone to the ground, um, there's something that is that is causing it to go down. And it, I can tell you right now, guys, Buoyancy and density alone do not explain the whole, you know, downward vector thing, right? There has to be a force there, and I'm going to prove that, right? And yeah, they play really, a huge role. Don't get, you know. Oh, they do. They play wrong. a huge yeah, role. Yeah, they're huge. The the downward bias is a very weak bias. It just sets a direction and a vector, you know, the vector, a direction and a magnitude. That's it. You know, a lot of people are trying to argue that relative dens density disequilibrium um, is the only force, which I can't even believe they call it a force. It's not a force, but it's the only thing at work that is causing things to separate and, and go up from down. That simply isn't true. And again, it's really, really quite easy to prove. <laughs>